Good Morning Miramar, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m., right here, right now. Good morning, Miramar. My name is Danielle Rialis, Marketing Coordinator with the City of Miramar's Office of Marketing and Public Relations. We're so excited to have you all tuning in today, Thursday, November the 30th. Today on today's broadcast, we'll be joined by Mayor Wayne Messam and some of the members of our fabulous Miramar Youth Advisory Council to discuss their experience at the 2017 National League of Cities Conference. Please remember that if you'd like to tune into this broadcast, you can do so by searching Facebook and Periscope using the at City of Miramar handle. You can also download the TuneIn Radio application to listen on the radio by searching It's Right Here in Miramar. Now the weather for today Thursday, November the 30th, will bring a mix of clouds and sunshine. The high temperature for today is 78 degrees and the low will be 68. Please be sure to come out tomorrow, Friday, December the 1st, and kick off the holidays with Miramar in a big way. The City of Miramar is hosting our annual holiday tree lighting ceremony. This event will take place from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Miramar Town Center Plaza. There will be a holiday kid zone, characters, food vendors, and so much more. We hope to see you and the entire family out there. For more information, you can call us at 954-602-3319. And now this Sunday, December the 3rd, the City of Miramar is hosting its third Miramar Mix-Up, sponsored by Zowie, Capcom, and Red Bull at the Vernon E. Hargrave Youth Enrichment Center, which is located at 7000 Vernon E. Hargrave in Miramar. This event will be featuring some of gaming competitions for a lot of really great games, including Street Fighter V, Injustice 2, Tekken 7, and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. To register, you can do so online and you can have more information by visiting smash.gg slash the Miramar Mixup 3. So we hope you check that out. Now, do you, um, as a Miramar resident, have questions, comments, or concerns about public works, utilities, or parks and recreation services here in our city? If you do, join us for one of our upcoming resident forums to address your needs and concerns. This very special informational session will be open to all Miramar residents, um, and there will be two that will be discussing city operations, which include traffic control, water treatment, street and sidewalk maintenance, recycling services, parks and recreation activities, as well as updates to the current and planned capital improvement projects. The first of these two meetings will take place Tuesday, December the 12th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Miramar Multi-Service Complex, which is located at 6700 Miramar Parkway. And the second meeting will take place the very next day on Wednesday, December the 13th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Sunset Lakes Community Center Ballroom. That's located at 2801 Southwest 86th Avenue in Miramar. We hope that all of you come out. And now we do want to remind everyone to save the date. The City of Miramar will be hosting a candlelight vigil to honor the victims of the 2010 Haiti earthquake on Friday, January the 12th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Multicultural Center here in Miramar. That's located at 2400 Civic Center Place. So we're just asking all of you to come out and support us as we honor the memory of those victims who were a part of that earthquake. Now, without further ado, I would like to reintroduce our fantastic team that we have here. We have our first Miramar Mayor Wayne Messam and a few members of our Youth Advisory Council here in Miramar. The first is Mr. Roland Bola. Then we have Ivana Fergoza and Kaylin Rampasard. Now, thank you all so much for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, I'm going to have the Youth Advisory Council members introduce themselves first and just tell them tell us a little bit about themselves, um, and then we'll go into kind of what Youth Advisory Council is here in Miramar. So, um, Roland, go ahead. Well, my name is Roland Bolo. I am 16 years old. I currently attend Miramar High School, and I'm enrolled in the International Baccalaureate Program. Um, some of my interests are STEM and city government, and with that, I'll pass it on to Ivana. So my name is Rana Fergoso. I'm a sophomore at Everglades High School. Um, I want to go into science when I grow up, but whether it be investigative science or political science, we'll see. And I'll pass it on to Kaylin. Uh, my name is Kaylin Rampasard. I also attend Miramar High School. I'm also enrolled in the International Baccalaureate Program. Um, some of my interests include aviation, engineering, and designing. Wonderful. 
So we have a group of definitely well-rounded students. Now, Mayor Messon, thank you so much for coming here this morning, as well as our Youth Advisory Council. I'd love for you to talk to us a little bit about this group and kind of why it was formed. What's the vision behind what the Youth Advisory Council is? Well, thank you. Well, obviously, without question, the city of Miramar, we're very proud of our youth in the city of Miramar, and specifically our Youth Advisory Council. Youth Advisory Council was started some years ago with the mayor's office and the chief of police um, office, and we work together to identify some of the best and brightest of our youth in the city um, to get them um, acclimated and exposed to public service and civics um, in our community, and specifically with the city of Miramar. Uh, we uh, involve the youth in very um, active programs. Uh, we take an annual trip um, to the uh, Congress of Cities, um, so the City Summit with the National League of Cities, which the city of Miramar is one of thousands of members across the country. Um, and we uh, just recently returned from Charlotte and our Youth Advisory Council, um, everyone loves our Youth Advisory Council and is basically the gold standard of all the Youth Advisory Councils. Uh, we have very um, bright, smart, and active down-to-earth youth. Um, they um, excel well in school and their extracurricular activities as you, as you just heard from just three of our 12 members who are yes. joining with us today and we're very proud of them and their futures are very bright. Yes, definitely. Now, we're, we're so happy that you all took some time out to come speak with us. We know with school and the holidays, everything's kind of busy. So you mentioned there are 12 members yes. in the Youth Advisory Council currently. What is um, a little bit of that selection process look like? Is it application? Tell us kind of about that. It's a very competitive process. We put a call for applications every year. Um, this year, we had several vacancies due to graduations from um, our, our previous um, cohorts of, of youth. And we asked the schools in our community um, before um, I became mayor. Um, it was just members or students from Miramar High School in Everglades. And I recently opened it up to Somerset Academy. Okay. So we, uh, for the first time, have representation from all three um, schools here in our city, which uh, we're very uh, proud of. So we receive um, applications. And myself and um, Chief Dexter Williams, we went through dozens of applications. Um, held interviews. Um, I'm sure they probably were shaking in their seats when we were uh, asking them many questions about um, their accomplishments, what some of their goals are, and why they want to be a part of this um, august organization. Yes. So uh, we are uh, we had the very tough duty to identify uh, the the best students that we felt would fit best in this um, youth advisory council, and we have our twelve members of the Youth Advisory Council and we're very proud of them. Yes, and what I'm really excited about is the members of the Youth Advisory Council that we're interviewing today are actually just three of the new members. Yes. So this is kind of their first experience um, going on that mm -hmm. conference and we're going to get into a little bit about your experience there but first um, I want to ask each of you what was the experience like interviewing? Tell us you know about the application process kind of what you had to do did you have to get recommendation letters from teachers tell us about that and what your personal experience was well this was kind of like my first time kind of doing this um, type of process mm -hmm. in a way it, was, it felt like doing a job interview we yes. had to um, we had to, first we had to write an essay about um, why we wanted to join the board and then once we did that we had to um, get ready for the interview with the mayor and the chief we had to dress the part we had to make sure that we knew what we were talking about before the interview and um, the interview itself was very, it was very rigorous. They asked us some tough questions, but mm -hmm. we were able to handle them. What was the hardest question that you remember? Um, one of the questions I remember were when they asked me um, why, what, what were one of the issues I was most, um, most um, like one of, one of the issues that I was more vocal about. Mm -hmm. And for that one, I put um, drugs. I felt like that was something that in, that we should be able to handle more in a way. I feel like there was more that we could do to make sure that our youth are more focused on other things. Absolutely. That's a great answer, Roland. So I'm going to hand it off to Ivana. Tell us a little bit about <coughs> so your experience. It was very similar to Roland's. Um, I had to write an essay as well on why I wanted to be on the board. And I also had to like answer questions in the interview. And I got really nervous <laughs> during the interview. I said it a bit. But um, in the end, I got very vocal about the issues that I'm very concerned about and was able to like communicate them with the mayor and the chief of police. 
And was did you have the same hard question that Roland had? I had a different one. A different and one? And it's what the one yours? that many people get. It's the why should you be on the board? It makes you different. And I had to think hard about that one, but um, I think I gave a good answer. And it was that I'm very passionate about my beliefs, and I think that I will go that extra mile to make sure that, um, that I address them uh, suitably. Absolutely. Um, I said, I stated before, we all had to go through the um, application process and we waited for about six to eight weeks before we got a response back saying whether we were even selected to come to the interview. Mm -hmm. The application had questions dealing with our school, GPA, recommendation letters, and our interest as a youth and what we can do to change the situation in the community of Myanmar. Um, the interview itself was, as I said, rigorous. Um, we did dress the part and we came um, ready to answer these questions with the knowledge that we were given from our education. The hardest question for me, I would say, was I believe I put down for one of my interests that I would want better roadways and um, newer restaurants. And the chief in particular asked me why would I, as a youth member, care such about roadways. And I recall um, saying that since I'm a new young driver, like many other adolescents in our community, mm -hmm. and that road safety is number one safety because deaths are the toll is raising is raising in death tolls throughout the city and we have to be able to limit that with the safety of our roads absolutely these are great answers <laughs> so you know um definitely thank you to mayor messon as well as chief dexter williams i think he selected just a few amazing youth in our community we are going to take a quick commercial break but when we return we are going to talk to our members of our youth advisory council about their experience at the national league of cities conference that happened just a few weeks ago and as well as their stake take on leadership and how they can affect change in their community stay tuned Hi, Miramar. We are so excited to have Mayor Wayne Messam here this morning to talk to you all about the upcoming Aviation Expo happening right here in Miramar. Good morning, Mayor Messam. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Doing very well. Um, we wanted you to give us a little bit of information about the Aviation Expo happening this Saturday, December 2nd, right here in Miramar. Yes, on this Saturday, December 2nd, we're having the Mayor's Miramar Aviation Expo. It will be the first ever um, at our brand new amphitheater at Regional Park. And the purpose of the expo is to provide aviation career opportunities um, for the community at large. Um, so it's for everyone from kids to working adults. Uh, we will have um, companies like Spirit Airlines, which is headquartered right here in South Florida, yes. um, Boeing, and many other aviation companies to talk about their industry, to let residents know about job opportunities as well as to expose our kids to a thriving um, industry you know the aviation industry is several billions of dollars in economic impact in south florida mm -hmm. and with aviation being one of our largest largest in, um, employers and industries in miramar it just makes sense to ensure that we continue to give as much exposure to this industry as possible. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned a few of the um, sponsors and participators, Boeing and Spirit Airlines. Are there any others that we could mention so that we can get that information out there as well? Yes. Um, the the main sponsors I mentioned as well as I do an aviation academy with an organization called Safe Flight. Mm -hmm. uh, and Safe Flight is a, a nonprofit organization that is really specifically um, geared to give exposure to the aviation industry to, um, to students and particularly minority students to provide STEM opportunities. And with Safe Flight over the last two years I've had an aviation academy which um, gives an opportunity for our middle and high school students to speak with pilots, uh, air traffic controllers. Uh, this year we added drone and unmanned um, um, aircraft um, mm -hmm. industry to the aviation um, academy. So now what we're doing is doing an all-out expo for the entire community. We have wonderful activities. Uh, did you know that at the expo, if you want to take a helicopter ride, you can take a helicopter ride? There you go. For a nominal fee, and it's a great opportunity to explore that option. I feel that in regards to the aviation industry, I had a meeting with three maintenance repair companies right here in Myanmar, and they had over 70 positions that were unfilled because they are lacking um, the uh, qualifications of trained technicians. Absolutely. And so that tells me that as a community, 
that we're not properly pre uh, preparing our youth in the workforce for these STEM um, um, job opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we expose the community and particularly our kids um, yes. to these industries, they may grow up and say, hey, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a technician, I want to be a pilot or mm -hmm. air traffic controller mm -hmm. or a drone operator. And we feel that um, if we just pre uh, prepare and give the exposure to the community, that we will definitely contribute to the pipeline of professionals that the industry needs. Yes, absolutely. And what I love about this expo is what you mentioned, the science, technology, engineering, and math component. Um, so for parents out there, you know, winter break is coming up, and this is a wonderful opportunity to expose your kids to something new. Even if they say, I don't like science or math, this is a great opportunity to say, maybe you might not like the field, but look at all the cool things you can do, and that'll probably pique their interest. In exactly. Like so we're asking parents to bring the children, but we're Ask, we're actually asking parents as well as the workforce. Yes. Um, you may not even be in the aviation industry, but if you come, uh, we have um, education and in, in, in technical schools, um, for example, like Broward College, Miami-Dade College, and some of the aviation uh, technical schools. So if you're thinking of a career change, they can mm -hmm. provide information on how you can get involved. And I, I guarantee you that most of the listening and viewing audience are not aware that just more than just a little of just three to four years experience as an air traffic controller that the average salaries for that uh, profession is a hundred and thirty plus thousand dollars wow you know and that is you know that is that is some um, significant income and we want to make sure that our youth and our community are aware of these opportunities absolutely many of our aviation companies have jobs incentives um, here in the city of Myanmar and those who will attend um, will be able to provide any employment opportunities as well so it's a community event I know we've talked a lot about the kids but we want the working um, yes. adults to come out as well to get as much information as possible yes. so this is for everyone adults looking for career change adults in the science technology engineering and math fields who are maybe looking for another opportunity and youth as well exactly. so we really appreciate you Mayor Messam for just coming out and really bringing this forth to our community. We know that aviation is so big in Miramar, and we love that you've spearheaded just another amazing initiative for the Great, community. Great, thanks so much, and we'll see everyone Saturday morning, December yes. 2nd, and the event takes place from 9 to 3 p.m. 9 to 3 p.m. at the Miramar Amphitheater at Regional Park, and that's located at 16801 Miramar Parkway. Thank you all so much for tuning into this portion of this segment. Um, we hope you enjoyed. And if you have any questions, is there a phone number that they can call or they can just visit us online? Yes, you can call 954-602-3198, 954-602-3198. And I would definitely like to thank again Safe Flight as well as the Richard P. Hall Foundation who's been very instrumental in helping to put this all together. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mayor Messam. And thank you to all of you again. Welcome back to Good Morning Miramar. We are so excited to be returning with Mayor Wayne Messam as well as the members of our Youth Advisory Council here in Miramar. Now, Mayor Messam, I want you to tell us a little bit about the what is the National League of Cities and what's the role of a Youth Advisory Council in that summit? Well, the National League of Cities is the federal advocacy organization for municipalities across the country to mm -hmm. protect and preserve home rule and the NLC has various steering committees where it makes uh, has a annual legislative um, agenda that our lobbyists go to Washington in the Capitol to to lobby at the White House and in Congress to to protect issues that are important to municipalities every year we had a we have a civic a city civic uh, excuse me a, ci a city summit yes. where <laughs> municipalities across the country come together to um, adopt the legislative agenda for the upcoming year. We just did that um, a couple of weeks ago in Charlotte, North Carolina, and a part of that summit is the full engagement of um, the youth of our participating cities in the city of Miramar is one of the cities that actually has a youth advisory council that we bring with us to the civic to the city summit. And they have basically their own concurrent conference along with us wow. and they have their sessions they have evenings out 
Um, they're able to interact with um, other youth, their peers across the country. Um, also, they get an opportunity to interact with elected officials from across the country. And every year we have dynamic speakers. Before we've had uh, former Vice President Joe Biden. On this year's summit, we had uh, Magic Johnson. He talked about not only his professional um, basketball career, but his success as a business person. And it was a wonderful session that, that took place. So um, it's really great to have our youth to be exposed and to, to experience the City Summit because it's memories that they have forever, as well as an awesome learning and development opportunity. Absolutely. Now, we're so excited that all of you had the opportunity to attend the National League of Cities. I want each of you to tell us um, kind of what you, what was the best part of that conference for you and what was your most important takeaway? Okay, let me um, start with you. Yeah, I found that Gabby Gifford's speech of her story um, from after, you know, being shot and her, um, her progress after, after coming Absolutely. from these hardships was very heartwarming and inspirational, and it taught me to always have hope and to never give up. Great, you had really dynamic speakers, Gabby Giffords, Magic Johnson, wow. Yeah. So I really enjoyed about the conference, how we got to network with everyone. Um, besides growing closer as a group, uh, the Youth Advisory Council of Miramar, we met different people, and I in fact met a girl from Mexico as well, so it was really fun to like meet people from different, from different backgrounds, but similar backgrounds as yours. And I think the mo most important thing that I took back with me was the motivation to apply. Because I got a lot of plans um, and suggestions given to me by elected officials and other members on how to so like solve and help issues here in the community. So I really gained um, a lot of knowledge on that. And I'm excited to start working on plans like that. Absolutely. Well, for me, I feel like um, the best experience I had was hearing my um, Magic Johnson speak. Mo what most people don't know about him is that he did struggle growing up. He wasn't talented, like a talented um, basketball player from the start. He had to overcome those struggles with hard work and dedication, and he made a success story. And with that being said, well, what I took away from that was that he took his success and he made sure that he applied it back to his community. And that's something that I hope to do in the future. Definitely. Now, you know, you each of you talked about a lot of um, really important learning and development opportunities, especially for young people nowadays, um, really, you know, that hard work ethic, applying kind of what you learned and having that perseverance and that hope. Tell us a little bit about, you know, and you can pick one of the three that I just mentioned um, and tell us kind of how you're working toward making that a, a goal for yourself and how you're encouraging other people your age to do so as well. Well, as youth, I feel like we all have... Um through communication, we could see that we all have we we all can see a problem in our environments, whether it's with um, our peers in school, and I want them to know that we can we can make a difference through becoming involved in your city and becoming involved on boards such as this one. We also have a voice and we also have a say. Regardless of what what ideas you have, there's no such thing as a bad idea. Make sure that you apply yourself into whatever. Um, you know, your city government, a board, whether it's in your school, at home, just know that you have the power to make a difference and to propose a solution to the problems that you see every day. Mm -hmm. So definitely the youth, they're what's going to change the world in the future. So it's very important for them to be involved in boards like this or go to conventions or go online and like educate yourself on the issues that are happening in our society. So again, definitely stay educated and be involved in everything that's happening. I think in order to cause, I mean, to foster change in the society in order to bring hope, we need to not dawn on the negative, but to reflect on the positive things in our life so that we can have this dedication as Gabby Gifford ex ex exemplified in her and throughout her life. And this is throughout the youth. I know suicide rates are raising in through all over the country and just having a positive outlook on life can change the dynamic of that greatly. Definitely. And I want to ask something else. Um, you know, you all are growing up in a different era with social media nowadays and really having the world at your fingertips through smartphones. I want to talk about um, what positive impact you think can be made using social media and really this platform that you have the opportunity to use. Because I can even remember when I was in high school, the first iPhone came out. So 
it wasn't like everyone had a smartphone with the social media, you know, like I said, at your fingertips. So tell us about how maybe some ways you can affect a positive change using social media. Well, it's all about outreach. So if you see somebody on social media posting things that don't reflect who they, you know they are, you can just outreach, reach out to that person and tell them that they are loved, they are special, they are an individual, and they are human, and they have a right to live as much as anyone else does. Especially when you see bullying, there's a way to stop that. There's hotlines, and even if you're not comfortable with the hotlines, you as a person could reach out to the person and show them that, that love so that you could be the person that stops them from doing what nobody should be able to do. Mm-hmm. I definitely agree with what he said. And additionally, um, if you have social media, you can use it as a platform to be vocal about what you believe in and kind of educate people because many people don't take the initiative to go and like find about these issues. So if you have this platform that you can use to yourself educate others, then definitely use it. So that's one of the ways you can make a positive impact Mm -hmm. on the community. Excuse me. Despite the negatives that we see in today's society, social media can definitely be used as a positive, like she said, to educate yourself to um, be a role model for someone else, you have the f- you have the power at your fingertips to communicate with anyone across the world. And I feel like we should use this opportunity to make sure that we outreach as many people as we can so this way we can make a positive change. Those are great, great answers. Um, and I also want each of you to tell us a little bit about what leadership means to you and what you're learning about leadership in the Youth Advisory Council program. Well, to me, leadership means to have a, a role model, someone there that you, someone someone that you could um, model after. Said so this way, you could exemplify success, hard work, dedication, something that you could take away with you at the end of the board. I know that that we have leaders such as the mayor, the chief. Those are people that we can um, go to for advice and to make sure that in the future, we are, we can exemplify some of those traits that they have given to us. Mm-hmm. So to me, being a leader is being very open-minded and collaborative with your peers. And I've learned that through experience because um, at the convention, in fact, we had a session where we had to work together to build a robot. And we, um, we couldn't finish and like get our prize if, no one, if everyone else didn't finish. So really, that's one of the important aspects of being a leader is. Um, and I also think, again, open-mindedness is a very key, is key to being a leader. A leader. <laughs> the definition of a leader to me with regard to being able to see different perspectives of each individual and being able to for the more address those properly in respect to those each other's beliefs. Miramar is very popular for a diversity and one thing I admire about the mayor is that he reaches out to all of our um, demographics found throughout Miramar mm-hmm. and um, doing this as they said as Roland stated before we have ro- um, the mayor and the chief to look up to for advice to allow us to gain some of those leaders- sk- leadership skills of our own. Absolutely. Now you're learning a lot, um, you know, as the mayor mentioned, with the Youth Advisory Council about local government issues in our community. How are you encouraging young people your age to also get involved with the issues at hand? Well, one way I reach out to my peer, my peers by is by showing them the great work that the city does. Without the, our city government, we wouldn't have new restaurants, different architectural styles, good roads to drive on. Um, shopping districts, none of these things would be possible without the, gov- the strides made by the city government. <laughs> well, honestly, I haven't shut up about the conference with all my friends, so they all know about it. Um, I also tell them a lot, like he said about the Merit City Miramar, what they do, and um, additionally, I just I encourage them to get involved with these boards like these, so. Definitely. Um, for me, I think um, I encourage my friends to make sure they stay informed so that this way they know about what's going on in the city, things that they might be even be interested in that they don't know that we provide. Um, it's good to make sure that you know that these things are there and that you make sure you apply it to yourself so that this way you could do to make, a, make a change. Definitely. Now, Mayor Messam, do you have any additional questions for our Youth Advisory Council as one of the... Um, stakeholders and really kind of overseeing this program? Well, you know, one of the goals in terms of having a youth advisory council is to get, you know, feedback uh, from 
from our youth because they are our future. And one of the goals that I have as mayor is to ensure that our city is sustainable to the point where when they graduate from high school, go off to college, um, that they see Miramar as a place where they would themselves would want to raise their families because we have many job opportunities that are fulfilling based on their interests, as well as seeing a community that has the prospects of a great place to call home yes. uh, permanently as adults. So I guess my first question would be is, in terms of the city of Miramar, yes, we have a lot going on, but no place is perfect. So what's missing in the city that you would wish that um, the city would incorporate that youth could uh, take advantage of and enjoy? Um, in my opinion, I feel like uh, youth today needs to be, they need to have a, a trust with authority. And I feel like here in the city of Miramar, we could provide more initiatives so that perhaps, you know, allow the police officers to personally meet with students our age. So that this way they could uh, understand that the police are there to help us and that we shouldn't feel threatened when we see them. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with what he said. And additionally, um, if we're going to like, specifics, maybe a newsletter could help um, because the youth doesn't really know about the stuff that happens in Miramar, not specifically. And so like having a newsletter to pass out to schools would help them get more, like know more about the city we live in and how to get involved in with it. Um, if I were to think of there's anything that could bring more people to Miramar, would probably be better new attractions like malls, um, different exotic foods for diversity so that people would have some reason to come back other than family and suburban life. Those are great answers. Yeah, great and very answers. vocal and I love that you guys are so confident and vocal about your opinions and really um, the difference that this Youth Advisory Council is making in your lives. Now I'm going to give you an opportunity to really just share anything in closing because we do need to wrap up, but is there any other um, piece that you'd like to share with the community as our Youth Advisory Council representatives? Uh, I would just like to say that the Youth Advisory Council of Miramar has been an enlightening experience for me and it's very inspirational and educational in a sense that I am gaining great knowledge on the works of the inner of the inner works of a municipal city government and it's just mind-boggling to see how things work here in Miramar. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to say to the community, um, please get involved and like um, like get involved with the community because there's a lot of things that we need your input on and it really help with um, making this, better, this city better. I found this whole experience to be thought-provoking and um, I feel like uh, this trip has really taught me a lot and I look forward to um, getting more knowledge from the board and I also would like to personally thank the mayor and the city of Miramar for allowing us to go on this trip and to gain these um, skills. Yes, and you know we here at the city of Miramar are so thrilled and proud that we were able to you know have this opportunity for our Youth Advisory Council to send you off to North Carolina and really learn um, some amazing things and I hope that this serves as an inspiration to our viewers out there to also see how they can get involved and reach out to us in that way as well. Well thank you all so much for being here today. We loved having you on the show and we had some great ideas about having you back so we look forward to seeing you in the studio very very soon. Thank you to all of you for tuning in to Good Morning Miramar. Remember you can tune in live every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 10 30 p.m. on our social media handles at City of Miramar on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Remember it's right here in Miramar. Have a good day.